Michele, I, I wanted to um, talk to you about your, your sketching style. So mm -hmm. I, um, you know, you get, okay, in, in, in my simplistic uh, explanation of things, you can get like very, very textbook, um, almost uh, like technical drawing uh, sketching, which, um, which is fine. And then you get like super, super exaggerated stuff. And I think that um, your style, I would say, is like, I don't know how to say it. Like, it, 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 I would say it's almost like, it's, a, it's like classic Italian sketching for me. It's like just, for me, it's like just the right amount of exaggeration. You know, it's, there's so much soul. I'm not talking about your renders. I'm talking about when you take this or you take a pencil and you sketch on a piece of paper. Where did you learn to do that? Um, I learned from him. From, from looking his stuff. And his then, name again, is sorry? Is, is David Arcangeli. He's okay. there. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a designer that he's passed away 20 years ago. He's the father of about, about the BMW X5 uh, series. Okay. And I, I think that Anders Werming knows him very well. He was working with him, Anders. And, okay. um, but I, not only from Davide. I never met him. But when I was a kid, when my mama bought this famous magazine that changed my life, um, I started to to get all the information about Pininfarina. And I grow looking all the drawings from uh, Archangeli, from Maurizio Corbi, uh, Goran Popovic, from Camardella, uh, from other talented people that was working there. And I was trying to understand how they was able to create with a less line this particular Italian style. And at the same time, uh, I was trying to mix my artistic technique with the way how I normally move my hand. Some of my colleagues or friends told me, ah, oh, your, your, your technique is so strange. It's a, sometimes it's a dirty, it's a too artistic. You are not enough clean, you know what I mean? But then in the end, you are able to get the essentiality about the drawing. Um, for example, I'm a great fan of uh, Flavio Manzoni's style. I consider I love it, love it, love it, love it. I consider Flavio one of the most complete designer and artist. He's an artist, piano man, is a, is an architect, but he's also is a great stylist. And when he's playing with the pencil, with the pen, you are shocked. But you know, I have the chance to meet a lot of people. But the man that changed completely my sketching life was uh, a guy from Argentina. The name is Juan Manuel Diaz. And I remember that in the beginning of my career, we, was, uh, we spent probably eight years of our life staying on the same uh, desk area. And I was looking at him drawing every day. And sometimes I was stopping him and saying, Juan, Manu, can I stay here closer to you? Just to look at you. I said, okay. And I start to copy his styling, just for to learn, for to improve myself. But then one day he told me, Michele, if you copy exactly me, if you copy and play like exactly me, there are no differences. You need to play with your own style. And then I learned another important thing. You need to play with your own style. You need to be recognizable. I don't how? 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 Doing practice, drawing every single day. Drawing. I'm not joking. I have here an amount of pads like these, and or here there is my agenda where I'm drawing. Look, I don't know. I can show, but you see some. Oh cars. God! Wow! Yeah. I'm drawing, drawing. I have the iPad and I'm drawing. My personal styling moves from the fact that I didn't. I love to draw thousands of lines because mentally I'm like you. I'm thinking that I'm playing like a 3D designer thinking the main volume, the main shape, the main theoretical line. And I'm transferring all those that I call the technical construction lines. 
I don't care if it looks a bit too dirty, but then with the right line weight, I love to emphasize the volumes, the character lines, the main shape. And today, the, the, the people are playing the, the opposite way. They play with the white paper and they just draw a couple of lines, they link together. And I'm trying to explain that, okay, works, looks cool, is my personal opinion, okay? I'm not God, so my opinion is that if you really want to design, design a car, you need to think from zero, all the volumes, all the sections line, the concave and convex sections, how the surface reflect. It's like that mentally I have the, the design on my mind and I need to transfer everything. And I'm not good just to do a few lines and stop. I love to work all around the idea. And I learned that, you know, I learned that when I was playing with the clay modelers. I remember that staying closer to a team of clay modelers. The clay modelers, they told me, Mike, keep a big pad, some pencil, come here. Tell me how the splitter works. Tell me how the headlamp works. Tell me how the section works here. You can say, hey, give me the chance to keep my Wacom synthing and I will draw that. No, they say, please, on paper, show me the section. And, you know, I try to mix a lot of technical information with the styling. That's why my styling looks like this. Because for me, it's not enough just to pull some lines. I want to give a reason why to the drawing. And I created my, my own style. And when I'm teaching to my students, the first rule that I say when you come here, I show you some workflows that normally we use on the design center. But the most important thing is that, that you create your own workflow and your own style for it to be recognizable. Because you know better than me that on the social media, there are thousands of people showing stuff and you say, but looks like that guy, but that guy looks like another one, like another one, like another one. Because why? They are coping. Uh, for example, um, I love the guy that are learning the field. They want to learn for to play on the field. I'm following Leonardo Tarditi. He's a guy from Brazil. I don't know if you never heard. Uh, no, uh, no, Leonardo. Sorry. Um, Leonardo Trovati from SketchIt.br. He's a ah, friend, yes. he's a friend yes, of yeah, Arthur yeah, yeah. Martins. No? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. This is a very yeah. cool man. This guy is amazing. Yeah. And he's doing amazing demos. And I love when I see other people that they saw his video and they try to do the same, you know? But the problem is that later you need also to grow with your own style. Or you looks like a copy, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think I think as well, um, again, I, 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 it's, it's an observation of mine that... Um, as you say, the more you do it, and 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 if you truly, truly, truly put in the time to 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 improve what it is that you're doing, naturally you will start to evolve into doing your own style. I think because you're not you're not then you're not then consciously thinking about how to how to do it exactly like 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 uh, Michele like uh, Flavio like whoever you know and I think that um, the the secret is hard work and to keep drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing but in to 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 clarify um, Michele would you say um, in the beginning it it is you know it is important to to try and copy what uh, somebody else's sketches that, that Absolutely. you enjoy doing Absolutely. The, 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 the first thing is to redraw, to copy existing stuff, just for to do an illustration. And the, the most important thing that people understand the difference between illustration and design. I'm also an illustrator. I did five books about automotive uh, things. Uh, behind me, there is uh, one of my best projects dedicated to Steve McQueen in Le Mans. And I did all the cars of the of this book, and here I consider myself an illustrator. On on my cars uh, here, sorry, I have a big uh, 
Here I consider myself uh, a designer. Here I'm recreating, I'm, co I'm, co I'm copying something that is existing. I'm generating a picture for a comic novel book. Okay? And is, this is great. Now I'm able to do that without any reference, any model, any picture. I record in my mind. This is the first thing for everyone. Play looking existing picture. The second step is if you, but not one time, let me say one thing. It's important that you draw the same car from different point of view. It's not enough just to see the car from one point of view. If you, well, let me show you one thing. I have here a model about the Bugatti Veyron here, okay? Okay. Hold it slowly, just still for a second. Wow, okay. Uh, yeah. It is metal. It's uh, four kilograms. <laughs> it's a present. So uh, what I would try to explain is that if you do the three-quarter front about this car, do also the side view, the side view about the same car, and do the three-quarter rear view. Do a tip-up view. Do a top view. Do a full front view. Do a full rear view. Try to get all the, from the same car, try to get 10, 15 different point of view. Why? Because you are redrobing an existing car, but at the same time you will learn volumes, perspectives, treatments, details. And this is a good important thing. Later, starting from the same point of view, try to draw your own Bugatti, your own Alfa Romeo. Try to change something. Staying and respecting the same volume. This is a good step for to grow, technically. Many people, they move uh, in one way. White paper, nothing, no, no reference, just to draw something. I think that this is wrong. In the beginning of your career, you need to keep reference from existing pictures, from existing object, and you need to analyze them deeply. Just not to consider that the headlamp is just a square shape, but try to understand how the lamp works, what's happening inside, how the grill works, or how the, the main shape here works. This is what the I'm section. trying to Yeah, the sections. And all my students, they do that. For example, I push them to buy, to get a model in scale 118, and they do 30, 40, 50 point of view about the same car. And then when they get bored, they say, okay, now you change the, split the car with your colleague and they move to another one. And they say, but why am I doing that? After a couple of weeks, I say, okay, now, are you able to draw the Ferrari F12 inside you without the model? They say, yes, show me. And I'm pushing them to use their brain. Because you know better than me, when you are creating something from zero, and you are in front to a white, a white piece of paper, you can just use your brain. You can listen to good music, you need to stay relaxed, you need to create something. But all the main things move from here, and you need to transfer to your hand. You can't put behind and retrace a 3D model, how, the, how, how some people they do. I, I dislike this methodology. To play with a 3D picture, with an existing picture, and to redraw the volume, and then just to change the shape. The nicest thing is to be able to create something from zero. But before to do that, you need to do a lot of training. A lot of training. But not one week. Several months. And let me say that I'm um, next year I'm 40 years old. I started to draw car when I was 5, 6 years old. So more or less I'm... 34 years that I'm drawing every day and I'm training myself every day and I didn't stop yet I don't consider myself a complete car designer I'm still growing this is the nicest thing in my life you still love it I still love it I can't I can't consider that I'm working I'm doing a job it's my hobby this is the most beautiful food because I'm able to jump to cross from design, product, industry, to illustration, to art, to teaching. I love to do that. I love to share my knowledge with uh, young people. 
as we said in the beginning, it's not easy because many things change in the last 10 years, 15 years. But I love it. I'm not bored, honestly. Michele, to your point of the amount of things that have changed, um, I was having this discussion um, a while back with uh, Bertrand, Bertrand Bach on uh, um, basically on, on, you know, products that, that, that the younger generation want today. You know, we, he was, he's a big, he's, he loves old vintage classic cars. He loves old Ferraris and, you know, all the usual stuff. But he was saying that... Can, can I ask um, you whom? Sorry, I didn't understand whom. Oh, Be, uh, Bertrand Bach. Ah, He's Bertrand the, Bach. See, see, see. I know who he is. Yes. Okay. So he was, he, was, he was saying that, you know, we need to stop thinking about the perfect proportion and dash to axle and all that stuff. And I, I, I on the one hand, I understand what he's saying in this regard, but um, I... I would like to, and I've I've got my opinion on this, and and we can we can talk about it afterwards. But I would like to know, like from your perspective, to that point, what do you think? Um, if that's the case, what do you think the newer generation could take from the traditional um, dash to axle, perfect proportion, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? I.e. Cl- from, cl- from, from classic car design. Personally, I think that we can, they will get everything. If you think about the history of art, when you move in the school, high school of art, you study the, the basics. You, start, you study the Renaissance period. You study Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raffaello, Giotto. Then you move to the modern art, until Picasso. Today we talk about Bansky, Andy Warhol, but also Bansky, Andy Warhol, Picasso. They start studying from the classics. And people like Michelangelo, Raffaello, they study from the Rome Imperial period, from Athens, from the school of Athens too. I think that this, the the creativity word is a chain that is repeating. We need to learn from the masters. We need to grow, keeping from the masters the best. And in the car design world, let me say that what we are expecting from the young generation, from the new generation, is that they are able to respect the past, to draw and to invent something that is new, but learning from the masters that are able, I think they are able to do better their job because they are able to feel more the sense of the proportions, the sense of the beauty, the sense of the creativity. It doesn't matter if you do that doing a 3D model or doing on a piece of paper, digitally or analogically. The most important thing is that how you move your brain, how your soul is able to create something new. And if without a good knowledge, a good uh, experience studying the, the best, the masters, the m- most cool project, I think that you will never be a good designer. Let me say one thing. I have a library behind me here, a library, real books. I still love to read books, to buy magazines, to buy automotive books. And uh, like people like Bart Lenartes from Belgium, from Waft, or other people that they spend a lot of time trying to explain how the masters did a good job, it's something important for us. I think that Manzoni too in Ferrari is playing with a classic Italian style, but with a touch of modernity. And I'm pretty sure that he's leaving, he's giving the chance to the designers that are working there to do something different. But the thing that makes the difference is that there are two types of brands. The brands that has an heritage, like Ferrari, Alfa Romeo, Maserati, Aston Martin, Bentley, 
that they need to respect the heritage. The clients love the heritage. And you, like a designer, you are involved to respect the heritage. Other brands, they have no heritage. Bertrand Brandt is, uh, is the chief of uh, Citroën, correct? Uh, no, no uh, 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 Chang'an. Chang'an. Okay, sorry, better. Is in Chang'an. Chang'an doesn't have no heritage. With all the respect for his job. But there is no heritage. I think that he, what he did is to create a design criteria, a DNA for the Chang'an brand. But we are in Europe, and like in the US, we have companies that now are more older than 100 years. And you can say to Alfa Romeo or to Ferrari to destroy completely their heritage just because the new, the new guys, they want to see something cool. Look Lamborghini, I, how it's evolving and, and, and growing. Uh, I think, I think, I think the, I think the question, um, I think this this particular topic um, refers more to, um, like, if you take a company like uh, Canoe, for example, mm -hmm. you know, where you taking, where you literally are taking, um, stripping things down to its bare minimum, and you are completely, it's 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 product design or, or the Zooks, uh, the Zooks car as well. Um, I think the, the the question the question lies more with 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 uh, subjects like that. But I would also I would I would then say as well that yes, you could you could argue that you know you are are cre that you are creating a box on wheels. But um, but it's not easy and, to create a box on wheels. Exactly, exactly. That's the thing. It's 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 uh you know there there's there's certain there's certain products that also might maybe you want a traditional wheel arch on your box you know or maybe you need to maybe you want some movement in the surface that you would be stupid not to look at the at at the the masters that came before you in order to in order to make it as best as it possibly could be it's not that you you know it's not like it's not that black and white, in my opinion. I think I think that that um, there's so much of the craft that that needs to be learned in order to 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 even even take a a, a completely new innovative product that isn't a quote unquote car. You can call it a robot. You can call it whatever you want, but that this is like you know for me the it's the traditional car design is is. Is the the um, the pinnacle of 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 beautiful beautiful products, you know, functional art almost, and you would be silly not to take some inspiration from that. I I agree with you, I totally agree with you. And thinking about your point of view, I just would like to say that I think that now uh, with a brand like. Uh, um, Tesla, Faraday Future, or um, let me say, with the one that you nominated now, sorry. Um, um, oh, Chang'an, or, or, but yeah, let's, uh, but yeah, talk about those ones, or Rivian, or whatever. Rivian, okay, so yeah. I think that now we are, I would like to say that there are two type of uh, uh, fields on the car design world. There are the brands where, they respect more the heritage because they have a big presence on the market. And there are the new brands. And the new brands, especially the electric ones, are uh, completely free without any rules. They can design whatever they want. But at the same time, now we have two types of designers. The first designer is like me. It's the classic one. The one that works just for a particular sector of the market. And then there is another one that is a car designer dedicated more to the new generation of the car design, more closer to the product design, industrial design world with the treatments. And, uh, but I think that uh, both, we need to learn about the craft, but also one important advice that I would like to say is that many people in the, in the end of the, their studies in the masters or in the school, they try to apply in, all, in many type of brand. Uh, maybe you send a CV and portfolio to Alfa Romeo, one day you send to Faraday, one day to Bentley, one day to Skoda, one day to Buick. And they don't understand one important thing. 
you have your own style. And your own style works not for all the brands in the world, but just for less brands. And it's important that now all the students understand if you play with a new generation of car design with brands like Link and Co, like Faraday, with something super extremely cool and hyper modern, or you want to play in the in the old, let's say, old school generation. This is important because I'm pretty sure that if you work 10 years for Ferrari, you can also work in Apple, the same happened. But your own style, your methodology, your approach is one and works just for less brands. And um, about the fact that there are these two type of uh, uh, generations, not generations, two type of designer, I think that this thing brought new waves, new shapes, new things, and also helps people like me to see something different. I mean, I extremely like when I see projects from the new, the new Bugatti prototype for me are amazing, new Bugatti stuff. I was falling in love with the Faraday Future project. I love Canoe. I love Lucid Motors. And I got from them a lot of vibes. And I grow too, looking at them. Maybe they also grow look at me or my colleagues, but also I did with them. Stop. I mean. Um I I think yeah, that that's I think we share a similar um a similar view on that. Um uh Michele, I read as well last night that uh in a I think it was in an art um uh, publication that was was interviewing you and they and you said to them you need to have culture mm-hmm. what as a as an artist or as a or as a designer what do you mean by culture culture is that means a lot of things for me culture is to be inspired not just in the car design world but to know things also from other fields, from science, from uh, math, from art, from, uh, um, from different things. And also, I remember one thing. I was in Villa d'Este, in Concourse of Elegance in Villa d'Este. And uh, I met um, different famous designers like Patrick Lecamont, um, Giugiaro, Spada, Gandini, and um, and one day I had the chance uh, there to have a lunch closer to Ralph Lauren, the stylist. And the funny thing was that I was on a table with Ralph Lauren, his wife, and Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean, the actor. <laughs> And you know, everyone was calling him Mr. Bean. He was so sad because his name is Rowan. And you know, I was like in the movie, I say, he's Mr. Bean. And you know, and I was wearing a Ralph Lauren suit. I'm not joking. Also, the shirt was Ralph Lauren. And exactly closer to me, there was Mr. Ralph Lauren that he present his Bugatti, the Atlantic. And understood how was important the value of uh, the culture to know also from, in this case, from the fashion design world. And this man, sorry, this man, Ralph Lauren, said to me, hey, nice suit. I say, thanks, is it Ralph Lauren? And he said, yes, I know very well. Then I was looking at him and I say, fuck, I saw him somewhere. Where I saw him? I say, and you know, every time when I'm moving in the Ralph Lauren shop, there is his big face on the wall. I say, sorry, but you are Ralph Lauren. They say, yes. I say, wow. I was so happy. And we start to talk about cars, fashion, art. And he was all time holding his wife's hand. He's falling in love about his wife. And they start to, also his wife start to talk to me. And I say, wow. It's one of the biggest presents in my life to talk with one of the most powerful creative men in the world. And when I'm saying culture is that 
You need to read. You need to grow. You need to learn from all the fields, not just from cars and not just looking Wikipedia. You need to read books. For example, I'm reading books about uh, Steve Jobs, uh, many people that, how to say, many people from the CEO, look, from the CEO of uh, Walt Disney, for example. This is culture, to learn from other people that play in other fields. And maybe one day you have the chance to talk with people like Ralph Lauren, or when I had the chance to talk with Flavio Manzoni, I was so happy too. When I talk with other colleagues and friends, we didn't talk about cars. During the dinner, we was talking about, ah, did you ever seen the last painting of uh, this young artist? Did you hear the last song of this one? What do you think about the Nike shoes? Or the new design language on the product design from Driade or from uh, Ar Ar Artemide that are our product uh, companies? It's important because we are not just people dedicated to cars. We are a person that has a big responsibility and they need to get the best influence and vibes from all around the world, not just from a garage. You know what I mean? This is for me culture. Yeah. This is for me culture. That's a very beautiful response. That's awesome. Um, that, uh, dude, I wanted to... I wanted to ask you, is there anything particular of, uh, is there any particular project that's been the most special to you and throughout your years? And it could also be uh, a teaching thing as well. Um, that was your favorite and, and if so, why? I need to be honest, I, I, I was um, <clears throat> involved a lot, probably the one that I remember with the biggest happiness is the Alfa Romeo Mito project. Because uh, <clears throat> this project um, uh, born in a very particular way, a moment. Can I just clarify quickly, is this the first, the first generation Mito? Yeah, the first generation of Mito. Okay, yeah. okay. And... Yep, um, also, I remember other nice project. I did also a nice kit with a German company for a Ferrari client, um, some things for Zagato too. I did also a lot of projects that I can't say the name of the friend because uh, they will kick him. Uh, so, also with Do It in Austria, we are doing great jobs about bikes and bicycle. We are doing something nice. But I, I bring my heart the period when I remember some nice moments for the Mito that, uh, you know, when I was in the advanced design, me and a guy from uh, another town in uh, not far from Milano, we are, uh, it was designing a small car for younger clients. And uh, at the moment, nothing was like that in the Alfa Romeo range. And we did this uh, sort of a baby Alfa. And in the end, when we finished the project, we put on the, uh, the big uh, furniture. And, um, and I remember that one day, it was late evening, our chief came back after a meeting with Mr. Marchionne, the ex-CEO of Fiat, FCA. And he said, hey guys, where is your model? I said, which one? The baby Alpha. The name was Junior. And he said, where is the Junior? I said, he's there. Okay, tomorrow morning, prepare this one, clean everything, uh, put all the right wheels, all the right tapes, all the things. I will need to present this one to Marchionne. I was, what? It's a joke. And he moved to Turin, showing the model. Then he's back, super happy. And he said, okay, we will do that. Okay, now, let's put on the trash this model. Let's start again from the new one. I was like, shocked, because I said, so they, they took our idea. And then all the moment that I spend with my colleagues, listening and looking how an idea will grow technically in, uh, how to say, 18 months, more or less two years, was amazing for, for the vibes, for the fact that it was generating something new at the moment, 
but at the same time closer there was the Alfa Romeo 8C competizione that is considered one of the most beautiful and iconic car and you know you was there in the same room with the 8C growing and with the baby Mito growing and I say, wow, I will never live something like that in my life. I was so young and I was enjoying that. And I grow a lot in this period, really. I think that the mythos signed me a lot. But then I did other project. I opened myself to other fields, uh, like this one, for example, to design uh, the 1970, the 1917 from Porsche an iconic car like this, to work for a Steve McQueen project that is one of my idols, is also here. <laughs> it was something great. I mean, probably now I became more older, I have not so many memories, but I think that growing and becoming older, I, I start to enjoy more some parts of my life and to give the right failure. So I think that the best project is the next one for me. Every 10 okay. years, I try to grow. This is my goal in my life. Okay. That's, that's, a, that's a good answer. I mean, that's, that's, isn't that also what... Uh, who, oh, I th was it, was it, Pini, was it uh, Batista Pininfarina that said, my next best, my, my next best project is... My, my, my favorite project is my next one, I think. I don't know. It's, a, it's an Italian I've, thing. I, I've, I it's know. an Italian way to say that the best come is to is coming is yet to come is yet to come yeah uh, but it's a uh, it's a uh, it's one of the things that makes your life i think don't close yourself don't draw every day the same thing don't do every day the same thing try to open yourself you're a creative person uh, study read books learn grow with your culture as i said i love uh, art i'm painting I'm, I'm a musician, I love to do, I'm a photographer. Uh, I do everything that brings vibes on my things. This is the thing that makes me alive and creative. This is an important thing. Absolutely. M Michele, how much, um, how much joy does, does teaching bring you? I mean, you don't... You know, the, it's easy. It's easy for some people. Um, you know, there's a there's a saying that sometimes that there's a saying that is that it's sometimes true, but it's not always true. But often, unfortunately, they say that you know those those that can do and those that can't teach. But in your case, that's totally, completely inaccurate because you are you are. Basically, throughout your career, you've done both side by side, and you continue to do both side by side at a very exceptional level. And I think um, the the question there is like, how much do you do you favor one or the over the other, or do you like that you can go from teaching to 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 doing? Uh, first of all, let me say that I'm happy that I'm able to walk in both fields at the same time because I try to treat my student like my employees or people that work for me. They know that when I'm talking with them, I'm not talking like I'm the professor. You know, people have an idea that the professor behind the desk with uh, glasses are talking and then he's leaving the class. No. When I'm coming to the school and I'm talking to my guys, I'm talking exactly like you are in the design center. I'm giving the response, the review, the comments like you are in the design center. Because I want to open their mind to be ready to get the feedback and to understand how the pro works on the field. This is the first thing. At the same time, looking new generation of guys that are drawing, inventing something, helps me also to grow like a designer. So I'm transferring all the vibes that I get from my students on my work too. I'm not copying them, but I'm trying to understand that the world is changing. And these things makes me still younger mentally. The fact that I see them drawing something that I, was, I wasn't able to think about a few minutes before. 
And I say, wow, cool. And when you see someone that is doing something completely new for you, automatically, I feel that I need to push myself. In the way about the thing, if you are good or not to teach, I think this is a part of the question. I think that there are people that are not able to teach because uh, characterly they are not able to do that. They don't feel comfortable. In my case, I feel comfortable. I love to communicate. I'm also lucky because my mama and other two of my uncles are aunts are uh, uh, professors. So I grow in a family with a policeman, ah. but also professors. But I'm not using the typical methodology that you can find in a, in a high school or in a university. Because I understood that in front of you, there are people with more than 22, 24 years old. I, I'm not a professor. I'm a designer that I'm coming here just for to, to show you how to do some things. And I have, I hope, enough experience, 20 years, for to say if you are right or wrong and to show you how to grow, how to improve yourself. That's why, as I, as I was saying in the beginning about social media or thing, about people that are trying to teach on the net, I say to my student, pay attention, just follow the best. Because I think that our field, the car design world, is a very tough and particular world. It's not easy to draw a car. Some people think, oh, come on, it's easy. No, it's not easy. Absolutely. I consider the car designer probably the most complete person on the industrial design world because you are able to hold any type of project because the complexity around the car is uncomparable around a pen or around the mouse. That's why I suggest to my student to understand that to draw just a car is not easy. Absolutely. And uh, I love to teach. Really, I love. Uh, but I, what I like most is to create a link with each of them. And I need and I understood long those 10 years, long the last 10 years, that each of them are different souls. You can't pretend that everyone understands how to design correctly in, a perspective, in perspective a car. Some people need one day, other people need one month. And the best, the most difficult part is when you see that a girl or a guy is struggling because they're not able yet to draw correctly, is to wait and to push them and to, 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 to say, come on, hold on push harder, no worries. Because today, as I said, they see, they look at video, they watch a video on the net about a guy doing drawing in five seconds and they say, oh, it's easy. But when you are in front of the paper, it's not easy. And I love to, 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 to open their mind, to open their eyes, to say the truth. Yes, this is one of the most important for me, to say the truth. Sometimes they feel that it's bad to hear the truth. But you know better than me that our world is very competitive. I say that in our world there are a lot of sharks. Sharks means people that are attack. They are able to do everything just for to appear. And there are a lot of Nemo. You know the little red fish? Nemo. Uh, I've I got two kids. Yeah, I, they, that's on all the time at home. Okay. Yeah. So I say to my student, when you leave the school, you are, all of you are Nemo. Be ready to move on the next aquarium full of sharks. That's why I teach them from the beginning to be honest, to say the truth, to accept criticism. To, I also push them to say what they dislike about me. I have no problem. I like the confront. Obviously that they feel a little bit afraid or scared because they look at you like, oh my God, He's the man on Instagram. He's the man that did that car. I'm no one. I'm a normal person like you, Sam. The funniest thing that the first question that everyone asks to me is, 
which car are you holding or driving? They think that I'm driving a lot of Ferraris or Alfa Romeos. I'm just driving two Minis. I have two Mini. One designed by Anders Worming too. So I think that to, to educate people is not easy. It's a very important responsibility. Uh, and let me say that it's becoming extremely rare now to find the uniqueness in a person. So part of our job is also to push the guy to understand to be unique, to be recognizable, to play with their own style, as we said. This is one important thing, I think. Wow. Um, Michele, I think I, I've probably got one question left for you. Quickly, two before I get to the last one, the second last one. Um, how, many, how many students do you guys take on a year at SPD? In SPD, in the master in car, not more than 25. In the one year course, two. But in the master in car design, we try to select uh, the people with the best skills because in SPD we have the opportunity to play side by side with uh, the designers of Lamborghini and what I mean is that the designer comes every week in Milano every week they have a review and it's cool for them because for the first time they also the feedback from someone that is working on the company and they came from several months, not for one week. From October to July, they have a review. <clears throat> and we have uh, not a big amount, but 25 is a good group. And um, I think, I don't know. Uh, yeah, in the last 10 years, I've probably, I crossed uh, from both courses more than 400 people, probably. How many, but how many people are on the bachelor program? 25. 25, okay. Wow, okay. That's, uh, yeah, that's very reasonable. It's, uh, yeah. Okay. So, listen, the last, the last thing I wanted, to, I wanted to end off with, okay, is um, not, a, not only what advice you would give to somebody starting out today, but what advice would you want to give to some kid who doesn't have the opportunity to come to Europe or America or Asia, wherever, to study at a, a prestigious school? What advice, what could they do in their local hometown? Um. I see myself on this question when I was living in Sardinia and I, had, I didn't have the same opportunities for to, when I was a kid for me it was just a, a dream to be a car designer and I felt that I'm not in the right place but the first thing is to never give up to be hungry and to follow your dreams and to do a lot, really to draw every day. And now, thanks to the net, to download as much as possible on your laptop the right stuff, the right content, and to wait the moment. I think that for everyone, there is an opportunity. When my father moves from Sardinia, I didn't choose to do that. It was a decision from the government and my life's changed. I think that for everyone, there should be the moment that something happened and your life will change. And until this moment, the only thing to do is to wake up every day with the spirit, with the feeling that your goal, your dream is to design on, the, on this field but at the same time to feel the enthusiasm, to feel the, the love for this thing. That's why I said to grow 
and to, to, to also to improve your culture. But the only thing is that draw, 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 and try to, um, to understand when is the time to leave the place. This is something that stops many life, to many people, to leave their own place, because they are afraid, they don't want to live far from families. Some, you know better than me, we did the same both, I think. And it's a part yeah. of, it's one of the biggest decisions on our life, is to, to leave the place, because if we feel that it's not the right place where to grow, we need to do that. And uh, this is the best advice that I should give to the guy. In parallel to that, yeah. um, the kind of a, a, a segue to that question is, um, would you say that it's possible to potentially uh, get a job as a car designer if you can't study car design at your local university? At, I need to be honest. I think no now. Before was possible. Before, yes. At the moment, no. I think that now the... The, the HR meetings, the type of selection for to play on the field change a lot. So now during the interviews, when they want to get someone, they became extremely picky. They want to see cool portfolios, cool stuff. I mean, I'm saying the truth. I don't want to destroy the dreams about anyone. But yeah. it's important that people understand that you should be the most talented person in the world. The most creative person, maybe you are super talented. And I'm not saying that if you are an engineer, you can't be a car designer. You can. But now, if you want to apply in a play, if you want to uh, sign a contract, you need to be ready and prepared, not just in cool sketching thing, but you need to be great in 3D things, in rendering, in VR, in, uh, in, in sketching, in digital sketching, in clay modeling. Before was enough that you are a great sketcher and then you learn all the things. Now you need to be ready. You need to be complete. Because there is not enough time that someone in the design center can teach to you how to do those things. And you know better than me. Now everyone needs to know how to play with uh, Alias or with uh, V-Red or with Showcase, with Maya or with Rhino. Let's say, yeah, or Photoshop I, or other softwares. But the que but okay, the, I understand what what you're saying with regards to that. I pers I understand this, and there's some of it I agree with. What I would also say, and I, I I feel quite strongly about this as well, is that with the amount of information that's online for you to see, okay, this is the bar that I need to get, and with more and more. Um, online learning coming coming about and okay it's still not there yet you know there's a lot of rubbish there as well you know as you pointed out earlier on there are kids that have you know they haven't they've barely even finished their courses and they're putting themselves out on the internet as some fucking expert like i'm going to show you how to design a car no but i but what the question that i that i would the 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 argument that i would have the counter argument to to what you've just said is that I would, um, I would say that if, look, there's no two ways about it. You definitely need a degree. It's, un, it's, 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 I it's, think that now they need a degree, a degree, absolutely. Absolutely. But if you had, if you, it's very difficult, but if you had those skills that you acquired through perseverance mm -hmm. and online mm -hmm. learning, I would argue that it is possible for 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 some kid on the other end of the world to be able to um, you know get their skills up with enough dedication and learning and hard work to be able to get a job on the international market. Probably they can, but this becoming as what as I was saying is extremely rare this opportunity uh, now. Yeah. Okay, that's fair enough, and I think as well it's such a. A complex landscape now yeah. i mean there's so many 
as you said, there's more and more graduates than ever. But again, the counter argument to that, and this is what Anders was saying, and it's, it's also true, is that there are so many more jobs that have opened up within design. It might not be that you're going to get a job as, a, as the rock star exterior designer, but there are so many other things as well, you know, in visualization, for example, the amount of jobs that have, that have, that have come up there. You were talking earlier on about VR as well. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, you know, studio, car, automotive studios now are basically creating their own uh, uh, film production, mini film production uh, companies within that, that tiny uh, uh, company to create their own animations and visuals etc etc so it's not that it would be totally impossible but i think that the, in general without letting my rambling go on forever now is that i think that with enough focus and um and with the right skill sets the industry is a lot more open-minded toward to to where you study you know it's not that you have to have studied at the Royal College of Art or Art Center or Fordsheim or, or SPD or wherever the case is. Um, I just, I, 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 I feel that that's, you know, that there is a possibility. But yes, it's very, very difficult. It's very, 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 very If tough. it was for me, I would open the door to everyone. But I need to say that, uh, especially we're playing like a professors and looking how they behave during the communication for to get a contract with an intern. To some of my students, I see that all the companies, they use the same methodology now. A CV, portfolio, graduation, CV, portfolio, graduation. And um, maybe the last chance is to use correctly the social media. If you are good enough, and there are some examples, some people with a great talent, without any graduation, showing their stuff on socials, the right ones, pay it. This is very important. Not to show every day something, but just to show sometimes the best one. They got the right attention. They catch the right person. Let's say a guy like you or like me, we are working in a company, say, hey, you know that guy? He's very talented. This guy is cool. Let's try to talk with him. So in that case, happen. But most of the time, you know, now there are, they became picky, the HR manager, they have a lot of power. They want, they do a lot of questions, psychological tests and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Uh, but those, but the thing is as well that, that it might be that an alternative environment that, that, that a kid from, I don't know, Africa, for example, or fucking uh, South America, or wherever the case is, that that person has a particular outlook or, 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 or perspective that a bunch of entitled kids from Fort Sime might, uh, might not possess. Yeah. And I think that, that, like that that's, that's also a very, very important thing to understand, is that, that um, it might be that a, a totally unique perspective is what they are looking for. In, in some instances, that's, yeah, I, anyway. I agree, it's no, a, but I agree with you. It's important if, if the, those guys and kids, they, are, they will listen to the video now. They need to understand that how we, how we roll every day. And I see that other colleagues, they are trying to say the same, like Luciano Bove, for example, is trying to explain every day to everyone on the YouTube how we roll on the field, how to apply in a company, how to present a portfolio. But let me say that I had a discussion with a friend of mine, with a colleague that he told me, you know, I think that the best next generation of designer, uh, they will move from some particular areas in the world. And he told me his opinion was from South America, from Africa, and from Asia. And I said, what do you mean? I mean, I said, you know, we are too stressed in Europe, in North America, 
in Russia, we are full. I'm, and he said, I'm pretty sure that one day, if I move in South Africa, and I will get a guy there, said that he loves car, and I will ask him to draw something, he will draw something completely cool and new. Because he's not playing like us in this world. I mean, he's out to the world. He's in another place. I mean, and he believes that the next generation of car designers, they will move from some particular areas on the planet. And I, let me say that I saw in the last five years, amazing people move from South America, from Asia, from India, from New Zealand, from Africa. And I feel the difference. They are extremely cool. They have a different point of view, a different vision. And this thing happens because they are not like... Uh, they're not surrounded like me and you from the European culture, the car design culture. They are completely free. And just something beautiful. So, I think that the guy from Africa or the guy from Asia, from Bangladesh, from other places that is not easy to get this job, they can get the opportunity. But in case it doesn't happen, <laughs> never give up. Hold on, go straight to the path and never lose the, 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 the feeling, the dream on yourself. Is the most important thing. Okay. Michele, it was an absolute pleasure, an absolute, absolute pleasure meeting you. Unfortunately, it's with this internet in front of us, but at the same time, it allowed us to do it. And um, I, I think that um, anybody that has the fortune to go to SBD is, uh, they would be making the right choice if they had somebody like you teaching them. So um, thank you very much for your time, dude. It was an absolute uh, joy and uh, educational experience for me as well. So thank thanks to you too for the opportunity. It's a great pleasure really to talk with you. And I want to say from also from other colleagues that we were talking about you. And we are really appreciating what are you doing now, trying to talk in this extremely honest way on the net and explain to the new generation how the car design world moves. You are doing a very, very important cultural things. And I want to say thanks to you for your amazing job. Okay. Thanks, dude. Thank you so much.